uh, just thanks to everybody for tuning in. Again, I think it's uh, pretty exciting. This has been such a great idea, and I've been happy to be on the other side of the camera uh, and ha getting to help out the guys at Golden Ticket Sports and Basketball Immersion to host some sessions. So it's been pretty fun for me to be able to actually get to present. So uh, we're going to get started. And all right, so we'll uh, we'll get started here. So today we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about forcing left to man to man defense. That looks all right, Chris. Right. Yeah, okay. you're good. So uh, I think what's been great with all these clinics has been, and as I said, been able to sit in on a bunch this week is really understanding kind of watching clinics with a different eye. And I think what's important for all the coaches online today would be uh, understand the context. So I think that you can take any, any concept and apply it to your context of coaching. So if, like I believe that you can take NBA concepts and understanding it you can make it work for a, a junior level coach. I think that that can happen. And I think, so I would ask you to sort of take these concepts that I showed today and try to apply them to your context. But on the other side, it's important to understand knowing when you're watching a speaker, what context are they presenting in? So understanding what level and where are they trying to teach it and where do they, where do they go with it? So I'm flying sort of the University of Lethbridge colors today, but my context, I wanted to explain that as Chris talked about, I've coached with Basketball Alberta for eight years with the provincial team, the three last years as head coach, the under 17 team. And it's been a great experience. I would say when I get asked by coaches, what's your best professional development idea or what, how do I get better? The best way to do it is coach, coach provincial teams. I feel like that level is perfect for challenging coaches. And it was for me always a Petri dish of where I tried stuff out. If you ever wanted to see what I was going to run the next year, I would try it in the summer because you're getting high level athletes, but they're young enough athletes that you're going to have to install things at the basic level. So when I coached team Alberta started with 2017, I spent a lot of time on my offense and we got to the, the tournament and we played a team that just, I felt like we were better than offensively, but they disrupted our offense with their aggressive defense. And we didn't perform as well as I thought we should have because of that. So when I came back out of that, I said, okay, I need to find, something that's going to work defensively and and i need something that's going to disrupt people and what is that going to look like so for me i think it's all knowing your style of coaching i would say that i'm more passive defensively i'd rather make you earn your your points in the half court than really try to scramble and i think again if it fits your team you can be aggressive but when people think disruption a lot of times you think press and i think the press and, and gambling works if you have the certain people but what i find in those types of tournaments we could press teams that were not as good as us or equal to us, and we would have success. When we played the better teams, especially when you got to the, the finals and you played the best of the best, you can't press them for 40 minutes. We couldn't anyways with our personnel. But what's a way that I can disrupt? Another good way to do it would be with zone, and I do play a lot of zone defense. Uh, but again, understanding that with the zone defense, uh, it's going to take some time to put in. And again, back to my context, when I coached Team Alberta, we essentially got together for two weeks every summer and then went and played right away in the major competition. So we didn't have a lot of time. So the context that I'm going to show you, the force left or lock left defense is coming from a high school level with a short amount of time. That's why I think it's applicable to a lot of you coaches that coach high school, uh, even that coach post-secondary. You may do things a little different than I'm going to show you because I, you may have the time to develop these skills where I didn't have it in my context. Um, but what I found with this defense was it broke flow offensively. It sure you give up things and sure you break down. You do it in all man to man defense, but this slowed teams down through indecision. This slowed them down through pace. It just, let's be honest, they, they just, teams weren't as confident with their weak hand as they are with their strong hand. So it's understanding that and living with that. And I would say that I'm definitely not the expert at this. I'm a, just like you coaches that are watching today. It was just me still learning and trying this. I ran this in 2018, tried a few things, liked a lot of it, changed some of it. Came back in 2019, changed some things, liked a lot more of it. And this might be something I still try to, to learn and grow with. I haven't coached it my, with my university team. I've, I've kept it with my, the Alberta team. And uh, again, I'm still just someone that's trying to kind of gain some ideas. And that's what I want to give you. I'm not going to give you a presentation today on you have to run it this way. I want to give you the ideas of the ways of things that I've collected or I've tried and share that with you. 
I think there's some outstanding programs that do this. Obviously, in Canada, Carleton is the is the the measuring stick for this type of defense of forcing teams to their weak hand and, and being aggressive. Um, and, and I think there's some great uh, concepts that they have that are very complicated. I'm going to keep it pretty simple uh, here as well. And again, try to find whatever I shared today. Try to find what's best for your context and what's going to work for you. So I'll give you a little backstory on how this happened, actually, though, that I'm presenting on this. So the guys at Golden Ticket, so Chris and Tanner, uh, who are the best, by the way, they, they run the Best in the West Clinic in Regina. And they asked me in 2018 to go out there and present. And I thought, well, this is a neat idea. I want to share what I've learned on this. And we did the session. They put them up on YouTube. And they kind of lived there for a while. And that's what it was. And then slowly over time, you know, and the videos were online for a while. A couple months in, I would get an email or two from people reaching out to contact me, uh, having questions on it. And it's, it's been kind of a neat thing. I, I think Golden Ticket has made me an internet sensation, but the video started picking up steam and I started to get more and more emails. And I don't know what it is about a quarantine, but over the last two months, I have gotten more emails on that video from 2018 than anything. I've gotten emails from all over the country. I've gotten emails from people all over the states, North Carolina, Iowa, Texas. I've heard from people internationally. Um, so it's been kind of neat and now I'm, but I'm here to kind of present obviously some of the same ideas that I have and then share some of the things that are different than that video of the changes I made. But I did put that link in the, in the chat, uh, that YouTube video, that clinic will give you a visual. Obviously it's a different format that we're doing today. but I actually had a chance to show it with players and move pieces around. So if you're interested in this, click that link. And if you don't have that link, you're watching this later, just go to Basketball Saskatchewan's YouTube page. Uh, you can search for Best in the West. You can search for me, search for Lock Left. It'll pop up in a few different ways. Um, but take a look at that if you want more visual. And when we get to the drills, a lot of the drills I talk about are actually on that video if you want to check it out. So um, really for me, I just want to, like, again, I want to share my ideas. and I want you to find what's best for you. Okay, so we're so we'll get into get into it. So lock left man to man defense. Really, what what we're trying to do is pretty simple. We're trying to get players to dribble and play with their weak hand, and where it's most effective is going to be when they're initiating their offense on the left side. So when we started a game at nationals, we looked at the best team at the tournament that year, and they we we char charted two games that they ran, and over two games they ran their offense from right hand initi initiation or right hand attack 85 percent of their possessions that is a, a high number and i'm sure at the high school level if you stand it heck it might even be higher so what this defense is going to do is at least it's going to force them to get out of their comfort zone every team likes to go right right side entry every team likes to attack right it's going to at least slow them down that way and, and slow them down in transition now when i started with this i thought it could be you know, kind of the, the joke with me is I love junk defense, but I thought it could be something that we could throw in here and there. And I thought it could be like a press or like a, uh, a zone where, you, you know, you pull it in after a timeout. What I realized quickly was it can't be. If you're going to do it, you've got to commit to it all the way because you have to train some of the basics. And the basics are going to be closeouts and ball pressure. That's going to be the big part of it. So I think that's important that you really have to commit to this. Now realize you are going to have to live with giving some left-hand lanes. And you're going to give some left-hand finishes, but you're going to have to trust in the numbers where you're, if you charted it over completion percentages, the chances of you forcing your team to finish, your opponent to finish with their left hand is going to be way uh, less effective than if they just were attacking right. So I, I think you have to trust in the long part of this. Uh, now, what I, one of the benefits I did notice was the more we practiced against this, the better our left hands actually got. So a bonus to this where our attack got better. Um, but I think there's some really key learning things that I pulled from this, and I'm going to share those. And one of the first ones is your athletes have to understand when you emphasize so much on getting people to their left, when you give up a right-hand dribble, they're going to feel defeated. They're going to quit on you sometimes. You have to explain to your defenders that just because they're getting to their right and with the right dribble, that doesn't mean it, your job's over. 
If you give up right, you've got to get back, cut it off, and send it back to the left. And again, dribbles that go nowhere right, those are fine. It's the attack dribbles that we don't want. But I think your athlete naturally is going to say, oh, uh, man, I messed this up. I'm out of this, and, and they're just going to stop guarding. It's one of those things I think you're going to have to, to spend some time on. So on this, I put the foundation of defense. The good thing with everything I talk about today, this can apply everywhere. This can, you can take this to your man system no matter what you do. And I really think that these five things are going to be applicable anywhere you go. The closeouts, I think, are the foundation of any good defense. You won't find a good defensive team, man-to-man, that has bad closeouts. It's, it's the foundation of everything. I really like the wording of the next one. I think it's the ability to guard and guide with your chest through your feet. I got that from a, from a clinic. But it's understanding that you're going to guide and you can, the, the defender can send the offensive player where they want them to go by getting their chest in front, but it's all through their foot positioning. Uh, communication and positioning and help side rotation is critical. A clear game plan. It doesn't matter how you're guarding actions, but you have to have a plan. And I think that's every level. You have to have some idea of what you're doing with it. And then the last one is commitment to details. The elite defensive teams, they don't make those tiny mistakes where too much ball pressure, a bad closeout angle, a missed call on help rotation, they don't make those mistakes. So I think that's important uh, to, to work on. So the closeout, as I said, I think that's the foundation. That's where this whole thing really starts from. And I think uh, it, it's going to really make or break, but you're going to have to rep it a lot because I, your players are going to have trouble with – they're going to be used to forcing probably generally sideline baseline. They're going to have to understand their body positioning and then the ball pressure. Those are the two biggest things of this making this thing work. And then the other thing is another teaching point that I think is massive is getting your players to understand – Forcing left is not giving left. And I think that's where it's so tough. They think, oh, coach, I got him to the left hand. But it's not a free lane to the basket. It's still going to have resistance to it. you still got to be able to cut it off and, and get in front of it. But you're trying to get them to the left, influence them to the left hand, not give them that. Where you can change this, this defense is through your ball pressure. You can be more aggressive or less aggressive. You can pick it up full court if you wanted to. You can pick it up. Three quarter, I would say at least pick it up half court. Don't give the offense two dribbles over half to get to the side of the court they want to run their offense from. Pick them up a little bit. And again, you're not going to get beat that bad with a left hand, ideally. So it's going to give you a chance just to kind of get some ball pressure and get them out of, of what they want to do. So I'm going to share, I'm going to pull up the whiteboard. It's been a while since I've gotten to do this. So Chris, tell me if you have trouble yeah. seeing this, but. We're going to get it. this up here in a sec. I'll, I'll show it. So what, what's going to be most important is going to be understanding your, your closeout angle and your ball pressure. So my artwork, and I'll show this up to the camera, those are going to be feet there, okay? So that is your opponent. And you're going to try to get them, obviously, we're trying to get them to the left. So the, way that we're, the three ways that we're going to talk about today are going to be how we're going to guard it. Force for us, and, and you might call force something different, but force is going to be the aggressive one. That's going to be getting on the side and on the hip. That's pushing into a trap. That's really, really playing it. If you really want to force them to that left hand, that's the angle that you're going to get on. Maybe not that high, but you're going to get on the side of it. The influence angle is the one that most people would call force. That's going to be a little bit on that outside foot, a little bit on the middle, and you're going to give the advantage to try to get them over to that left hand. So you're trying to give – you're trying to give uh, – your defender a little bit of an advantage by trying to get them to the left side. Okay. And then the last one is going to be shade. So shade is going to be more of a square off and, but you're going to split the difference. Your foot's going to be in between the, the offensive player and you're going to square up. And why that one works is when you're a little more athletic, you can just slide and cut them off. You don't have to give any sort of advantage where on influence, you have to give them a, a little bit of a clear path to the left hand. This you're going to stay in front but you need to be pretty, pretty athletic to be able to do this. Now, the number one question I'm going to get, and I'm sure maybe it's already in the chat, what happens when you play a star left-hand player? Fortunately for us with Alberta, uh, each year we played, one of the best teams each year had a star left-handed player, and we had to deal with it. And the way that we did it with Angle was when it's a star left-hand player, two things. Number one is we got our help to come in early. So we took a step off our regular help side and started to come in early because we anticipated a left-hand attack. And the second one we did was we squared it up. Okay. So 
we matched up our toes with their toes. We, we didn't give them a side, so Shane would be over to one side. We stayed up, and we just squared up. Now, what you're going to have to do, depending on the star player you're playing, is how much distance of ball pressure are you going to give? That's going to be the difference. Is it a really aggressive attacker? Maybe you've got to space off. If it's a shooter, you got to play up. But we just would square up a star left-handed player. If it's a regular skilled left-hand player, square them, up, square them up and you're okay. You don't have to be as aggressive on it. But that's how we guard it. The other piece that's going to be important for you is understanding ball pressure. So I got to host a session with Thomas Corey from Nipissing a couple of days ago. And he talked about in their scout, they talk about players three ways. They call Ray Allen is a shooter. Dwayne Wade in the scout is the driver. And the Rondo are the people that they're going to space off of. So what we would do with ball pressure is we would guard the same way. If we're going to guard the Ray Allen, we're going to get in you. So we're going to play hand pressure. So I'm going to try to show it here if I can. So hand pressure is going to be my elbow is going to be bent to my side and my, my hand is going to be here. So it's essentially the length of my forearm. If I was in a closeout stance, I could touch the logo of the jersey that I was closing out. That's going to be our close pressures, our hand pressure. If we're going to play a driver, we're going to go arm pressure. So we're going to go our full arm extended and we're able to touch the numbers on the jersey. That's going to be how we play the Dwayne Waits. We're going to have a little bit of space and be back more. And if we're going to play the rondos, we're going to call what we call sag or gap. We're going to play an arm and a half away. So if they think of it as a full arm extended plus another half of their arm, that's going to be the distance that we're going to stay away. So I think that's important is understanding the ball pressure and understanding the angles. Those are the things you're going to have to spend the most time on. The other thing is what's going to happen is they're going to go left. Okay, they're going to go left. And your player is going to want to stay on the hip and ride the hip. So as they go, we're going to want to go right beside them. And that's, that's fine. But what you want to do is once you get them going left, you want to come off that path and you want to beat them to the spot. You still want to cut them off. You have to get that idea into it. Your job is just not to get a left-hand dribble and stay on their side so they can go all the way to the rim. And you're probably going to pick up a foul. You're going to drop off and try to cut that off if you can. So understanding that you're not just going to ride hips. And then the hardest part for these closeouts and these ball pressures are not going to be the first one. You're going to be fine on that. Where you're going to have trouble is starting to get them on, on the second and third closeouts. Those are going to be the hardest ones for your athletes because they take a bit of time uh, where they're going to have to get their feet set. So you're going to need to be able to uh, um, rep those in practice a lot. And then the other thing is, too, is if you get them low, so if I, if I force you left and force you to the corner, the thing that drives me nuts as a coach is when we allow them to dribble back up the line with their right hand. If we've got them on the left side, we want to keep them low and keep them on the left side. We don't want them to come back by us being soft. Okay, so the basics of it are, are here. So defending one pass away. And I'll do my best to show it with a diagram, but essentially – these are the things you're going to have to work on. So when we're going to the left hand, you're going to play what we call in the gap. So if you ever run a pack line defense, you're going to guard it the same way. You're going to adjust how close you're going to be to your offensive player, with, but you're, you're going to want to be able to be in the gap and stunt and recover. So stunt and recover is going to be a skill you're going to spend a lot of time on, and your athletes have to understand that the stunt skill is going to be a bluff. You're going to show, and you're going to come back. We, we would go with a one-step stunt with a swipe just to get in the way so that that number one in this diagram feels like there's no free path to the basket and they're going to have to come back to it. So again, you're going to have to wrap your, your athletes getting in these positions to the left. And again, as I make the joke, let them really understand which one is the left hand and they have to identify that quickly. If we're going to the right, we don't want the ball to go to the right side. So we're going to deny one pass away in the right side. Okay, and that's going to be us being aggressive. Now, you're going to decide how much you want to deny. I would say two or three steps off the three-point line, depending on who you're playing. Anything higher and they reverse it, that's fine because now you've taken them four steps off the line. That's good defense, and I'll, I'll live with that. So, but you're going to deny to the right side one step away and then be in the gap left side. That's going to take some time, but that's one of the big pieces. The biggest piece, though, is going to be how do you guard action, and that's going to be a really important part to you. So. I'm going to show you a bunch of ways that are suggested to guard action uh, because there's, there's a lot of things that we tried. And I'll go back to my context. I talked about the context. In 2018, we tried to guard it a little more traditional. And, the, and 
it broke down in places because again, I have a short window and I have high school athletes that took some time to understand the concepts. So 2019, I sat with my assistant coaches uh, and we came up with an easier package. So our package, and I'll show you what we ran, was we just went over, when we were guarding actions and guarding ball screens, we went over everything. And I'll show you how that looks. So it's a little different than traditional uh, lock left, but why it was effective, it was simple and we could get it in a two week period. So again, understanding our context a little bit more. But talking about ball screens going to the left hand. So we had a call, we had a color call for each one of these. So if we were gonna go to a certain side, it's red or it's blue or it's white, and we knew what we were in. But really in our package, if we went over everything, it's gonna be the person guarding the screen is gonna make the call. They're gonna call to, to, and they're gonna be the one to make the adjustment. So what I found the most effective for these ones going left hand was over with a soft hedge. You couldn't go under for sure, but I like over because you put, you put some pressure on the ball handler that take and commit to some hard dribbles with their left hand. And a lot of times with weak ball handlers, they're going to go one or two and pick it up, and you've done your job. We're going to go with a softer flat hedge just to be in the way and not give a free line to the basket. So they're going to have to think about their attack. But that's, that's the best way that we can do it. As I show here some other ideas, like I said, you can go under. Uh, I've seen at the FIBA level a lot. They'll actually ice or weak. Uh, they'll send it on both sides. And they don't care if it's right or left hand. It goes against their principles a little bit. But they, they would rather at that level force you to the corner to make a play than even take two dribbles with their left hand because their skill is going to be a little bit better. And then there's always a chance you could switch and then just re-engage the force to the left. But for me, the most effective was over with the soft hedge. The one that's going to be a little, was a little trickier for us was with the right hand. So you're going to hear me on that 2018 tape kind of complain about how we guarded it. And the traditional way to guard it is to ice it. Uh, you, want to, you want to get up high on it. And, you want to, and I heard a coach talk about getting their toes to the sideline. That's what you want to do on your ice. But you want to send it to the corner. And you want to send it to the corner with their left hand. Ideally, they're going to have trouble making plays out of it. And they're going to get stuck in the corner. Where we had the trouble in 2018 was we just couldn't get to that ice angle with the guard. We couldn't get a proper angle to send them there, and we allowed middle so much. And where they really hurt us was on the second or third pass and then the ball screen, we had trouble getting to load up to it. So I would say, again, if you're running this and you got time and you feel good about it, I think ice is the way to go. We would actually go over with a hard hedge, which when you think about it is actually against the, the philosophy because we're going to force the right hand. But what we're going to do is we're going to force them into a hard hedge. So where they're going to take a dribble or two, run into the hedge, and then pick it up or hopefully kill the ball off that. So, again, us keeping it simple with over and everything, that's why we did it. Um, you can trap off these screens if you have a star right-handed player. And then, again, you can switch if you had to. Okay, the middle action. That's, that's in my 2018 video. I complain about how much trouble we have with it. and We tried a lot of things off of this. The traditional way to do it would be the same way. Traditional way in lock left, if you're going to go to the right hand, you're going to ice it. So that's that first one. You're going to get on the high side, and we're going to go with drop coverage with the post. You see that a lot in the NBA game where they're going to drop off. The X5 is going to drop off the, the 5 and be sort of in the lane and just contain. And if the screen setter rolls, they have enough space to find them, but they want to drop and be in the way of the person driving. So we're going to ice it to the right hand, and to the left, we're going to go over the same way. Again, back to my team, we went over and we even forced right on this. We just felt like if we forced right middle, we could reattach or we had X5 to contain it. So again, whatever you have time for with your personnel. You can also, we did in 2018, we went under this as well. And, and if they're really high, it would just go under them. But you can go under the screen and re-engage and get back to the left. And of course, you can switch it if you had that type of team. So just some ideas. A couple of things to build off this though. I would say um, with other actions. So I've got some areas highlighted, but if you see my, my arrow on the elbows, if someone, and a lot of teams will run ball screens out of that or on the lane lines or even the short corners now in some offenses, we would just switch that. We couldn't get into our action with that low to the basket. We would switch it. It's the easiest way to do it. I think that's a good way to, to do it. Other thing is start to plan on your other actions. On handoffs, you can switch them, which we would do. You could just fight through them. Gets are becoming a popular action, so that's where you enter to the ball to hand off without the person dribbling. Decide you can guard them like ball screens, you can drop cover uh, again, you can do a bunch of things, but you have to have a plan for those types of actions. 
Gabe, can I stop you quick here? Yeah. Um, two questions. Uh, when the person guarding the screener, when the ball handler goes from right to left the way you want to, um, yeah. what is the, the screener's defender? Are you guys in drop coverage um, when they're going there? Like those two yeah. sides right there in the, in the yeah. middle one. So ones. that's a good question. So we hard hedge yeah. it. We're going to tag from the, the low bottom person. So they're going to tag the roller. So as the roller goes, we're going to tag from the low side, from the bottom side. So we're going to be up in this one. And then that's a good point because you are going to give the slip, but we're going to have our low help defender tag them. Perfect. And then the other question that came up is just uh, just show ice. You just make sure everyone's clear on icing right now, Dave. Sure. So ice here, it, it, you're going to be – so if you see my arrow, my defender is going to be up on that high side. They're going to not let you use the screen. They're going to reject you back to the sideline, uh, and they're going to be aggressive here. The five is going to guard and going to drop and be in this area going to be a little underneath the screen so as we send it this way we're going to have our drop in this place when i played chris's teams at lakeland they would ice the crap out of us so he he can explain this as well quiet quiet okay, <laughs> so we're going to get into the rotation so the rotation part's tough to to show i think during uh in this setting again it's tough without moving bodies and i and you guys all know as coaches defensive rotation questions with your players well what if this happens what if this happens but i want to give you a quick overview and then i do want to show you some video so we did this two ways we had two ways that we did it when we got beat off penetration we either had a the first year we had to recover to our own so if one beat x1 x1 would come back and and stay with one and catch up to it and play back to it and the second year to make it easier we peeled so we got beat by this person attacking this person would peel to the open man. So in this one with just a four-man rotation to give you the idea, I'm sure most of you are familiar with peel. The help would come over. X2 is going to split and 2 is going to play 1 here. So they're going to play the first pass. And then X1 and this one would take 2. I'll show you what's going to – there's going to be a common question about what happens when X2 is denying because they are denying to the right side. But I'll show you that on the board here in a second. Uh, and then I'm going to show you now with the 5 in. And, and I'll, I'll talk to you in a second about – what our five defense is going to be. Um, but in this case, the five now with the post in, they're going to be the help off the weak side. Same thing. We're going to move off, off of here, uh, help off there. X2 is going to split the difference and play it. And X1 is going to find the open man. So we could get into a lot of what ifs. And I think for me, it's, you're just going to have to find a rotation that best works for you. One of the best things I would say is you, the vocab that's going to work with this is stay and help. Your athletes have to call for help, and they have to call it early. And if they get beat, they need to communicate early for the help. But if they don't need help, we don't want to help. So they're going to call stay. If they call stay, don't rotate. And I think you have to work on that because your teams, and I'll show you on my tape here in a second, are going to over-rotate a lot more than they're going to rotate. You just want to make sure you're working on stay and help. Okay, I'm going to go to my board here for a second. Okay, so we talked a little bit about that, that rotation. So if I've got my, my four-man here. Okay, so we've got this rotation here. Ball is going to go here. Okay, we're going to go to our left. Okay, so the 4x4 four four here is going to become our low help, and we're going to help here. Now, what you're going to ask me a lot of the time is, well, one pass away to the right side, we're up and deny. So ideally... As we go, X2 should drop into this spot. X2 should be here, and they should be able to now, as we drive off of this, we should be able to go off this pass. X2 should be able to take the first pass. What's happening, though, is you're going to say, well, you're denying here. So you're going to get beat. They're going to get penetration. X4 is going to come over to take it away, and they're going to kick. And that's going to be true. So what's going to happen is if they kick to 4, X1, is going to have to peel to that. So that's why I say peel to the open man. So when we did it the first year, we would recover to our own. So we would do it this way. So we got X4, X2, X1 gets beat. Okay, X4 comes over and takes it. X1 is going to recover back to this, to the one. They're not going to peel. They're going to, they're going to stay on this until they get back to cut it off. X2 is going to play the middle and drop. Okay. So now what's going to happen is out of the first pass, X2 is going to take that one, and X4, whose help, is going to take the other one. They're going to X out of that side. On the peel rotation, like I showed, it's going to be similar. X4 is going to take it. X2 is going to drop to the first pass, ideally here, and then one is going to peel there. 
Again, this might be confusing with the board. So if you have questions, I can all, uh, answer them offline as well. What we're going to do with the post now, with the five in, is we are going to go. So if the ball is on this side, if the post is on, if five is on the ball side, we are, we are not going to help off this. So our X5 is going to stay. They're going to stunt off this. And that's what's important is you're going to have stunt and recover everywhere. So on this penetration, they're going to stunt off X5, but they're going to stay attached to five. Now, some people do this opposite with lock left. I find this easier. It keeps our five in rotation to be able to rebound and it helps them. If they put five on the weak side, then we're going to have X5 be the help. Now they are going to help. Now they are going to step up and take it. So X5 would take that, and then we would probably help off if there was somebody in this corner. Or if one got beat, one would peel here. But we're going to help off that. High post, we don't help off the post. We stay attached. Ball side and high post, we help off the weak side. Okay, and that's important to kind of get an idea and understand it that way is that that's what we do. Again, you can do it differently, but I just think it, it helps that way. I'll say the other thing too is people always ask me, do you force the post a certain way? Uh, we don't, but you could. You could play to a side and force your post to attack left because you'll have help side rotation. We would if we ran this longer, but we just didn't have the time to get good at that. Chris, okay. any questions before I get to the Yeah, video? no, that was one of the questions, just how you play, uh, how you play in the post. Uh, yeah, one of them. easiest way, we just want three-quarter and we just play because it was just easier that way. Um, I think it's – but you could force it to the left side and make the rotations happen. And then the yeah, second got, question, yep. second question, Dave, just before you go to the video, is yep. the help side, especially on the first thing that you drew up there, penetration from the mid, um, are you squaring up on the help or are you helping and forcing that dribble to continue left when the help comes in from, like, the baseline – low corner you're gonna square just, up just especially there. yeah if it's a low help you're just gonna square up and get in front of it and wall it off basically i mean if you can lean on the left side a little bit again for us in our context we just said we gotta, gotta get a body there and force them to make a play somewhere else great all right let's see this video. okay so i'm going to show a little bit of video here and we'll walk walk through this so the first one here is going to be so this is going to be uh this is some practice scrimmage tape but, and it's us kind of learning it. So I'm going to show you some things that worked and didn't work in this. So let it play first. So the catch on the wing, they're going to run wing ball screen. That's our, our wing ball screen. So it's a little bit of a drop, but we reattach well and force over. And then same thing. They want to reject it. We don't want that to happen. We want to get it back to the left side. And we force that off of it. So I want to show this again. I want to break this one down a little bit. So I thought we were starting off a little too soft on that, but we do a good job here. Good angle. We get position. We're getting over. Now, my post for this one, I would say usually we're up a little bit more attached to the post. She's really in drop when she should be in soft hedge. But again, you can see how her being there affects that path. And they take two dribbles and pick it up. It, it's a common action. She's there to show a person on the ball will reattach. Okay, so she picks it up and throws it over. Now, what should have happened is – I feel like the defender that's going to come up here, down here, down low, should be a little bit more in the gap because we're off to the left side, but it's a flash out of the post essentially. So she comes up, and she does a good job to get herself to the left hand. Good closeout, good angle, and she's going to force it that way. Drives it left. You're going to see a lot of those skips. I like here where we get a good closeout. We're on the ball. The guard's pretty crafty, wants to go here. We cut her off, and we send her back to the screen exactly what we want to do we don't want to give the reject we get over that we show she has to stop and now she's going to try to make a tough pass we've got low help here which is good and we've got a now a long arm defender on the ball and we tip it out of bounds okay next clip is going to show you can influence it here so they start on that side of the court we get them all the way over to the left does a good job to cut it off and then plays out of it so again another ball screen this is more the middle ball screen there's the drop coverage they try to make the play. We reattach and help with the stunt. And now this is where we get lost. And we get hurt here where now we give up exactly what we don't want, which is a dribble to a right hand three. So I'm going to show that one again here. If I can get to it. So here it comes. So first thing is where do you pick it up? We pick it up here about half, and they're dribbling up the right side. By the time she's done, she does a good job to get her over here. And this is great defense. Puts her over here. Now – she takes a couple of dribbles, but she cuts, she cuts her off. That's fine. Those dribbles are to the sideline. We're not worried about those. That's really good ball defense. 
they get it over. It's a little soft, but again, we'll live with it. This is our drop coverage. We've got our, our five men in the lane, taking it up. And you'll watch, look at the space they have for the pocket pass. They're going to make this pass, but she has time to now recover. She's lost nothing as the five and she's back on it. And what you're going to see is when we talk about stunting. So we're not helping off the strong side corner. We call it strong side show. I probably didn't talk about that, but we're going to stunt off that corner. Well, that's a stunt. That stunt gets in and digs one hand stunt with a swipe, gets a piece of it. And now we're able to deflect the ball. Now what happens on this is a skip. We get turned and they don't have a plan. There shouldn't be that soft a pre ball pressure. That's what's going to break down your defense. They're, they need to switch this and then it just breaks down into a bad shot. So again, I'll show you the kind of the good and the bad. Here is going to be a first left. So you're going to have to actually force it to the middle. So you're going to actually give that lane and your defense and want that to happen. That's going to be something you're going to have to get used to if you're a baseline sideline coach. So when we get back to it here, you're going to realize that you're going to have to give that to it. So I'm going to show what that happened, what that looks like. So here it is. Now she sets a little bit of a screen, but I count this more as a force. She gets a piece of her, but she's going to essentially want her to get there. Help side is low and it's there. And then we've got the person up here that's going to be in the gap to stunt and take that away. Does a good job to get around that. And again, is not going to ride her hip, but is going to try to cut her off. She wants to, she knows where she's going. She's going to get down to the edge of the charter circle. She's trying to get there. She's going to get there. Help steps in. You can see the legs here that take it away. This is the, now this is a great rotation because now they're going to kick to the corner. That person right here is going to go play the first pass. They cut this wing player in. This year we were playing while we were staying with our own and we were staying on the, on the driver. In a peel situation, the peel would have taken this girl here. But this is when the 2018 when we stay with it. They do a good job to recover and we're good in that possession. Okay, next one is going to show you the shade. So this is a guard. We were really – this guard was very quick, very athletic guard, and really wants her right hand. And we wanted to – so what we did here was shade, and that's what I said you're going to have to play with your pressure levels. We did a good job to square her up and shade her in front of her, and look how bad she wants and she just gets rid of it 16 feet away, and they go take a quick drive. When I put – was going through the tape again, you'd be surprised how many times the offense just picks it up, says, I, I don't want it anymore get it on my left hand. So she wants bad the right side. We shade her this way. We're going to split her and we're going to say, if you're going to go anywhere, look, you've got the whole middle of the floor left. She doesn't want to go this way, but we're respecting her speed. We don't want to get on her hip. So we're going to stay in front of her. So she just says, okay, I'm one step over. I'm getting rid of this thing. Good ball pressure, a good closeout here on the second one. And then she's going to be able to, to drive it and send it that way. Okay. And then we get a stop there. Last one is, going to be entry on this side so they get up to four this is what i call possession of almost and this is what you know when coaches show all the perfect possessions i'm going to show you some imperfect possessions of the problems you're going to have and this clip kind of gives it it's it's a good possession but it breaks down in a couple spots and i wanted to show it for you so i'm going to go back to this one so first thing is we love getting them when they're coming up the left hand side of the floor in transition we love that that's great now first close out good angle we want to get her to the left hand we're okay with that but those dribbles right there would drive me crazy we're too soft they take two dribbles right up the right side we got her low she's coming up to the wing we don't want that ball gets out now this is my five man so i can't pick on her too much but not bad but just probably a little soft but not bad again good enough angle the first to the left this should be more deny this is too soft but they sit on it and she does a good job again to get her back to the left this guard does a good job to adjust. And, and then this is what we want. She cut her off. You saw the space, took the space away low. And now she's on her hip. She's going to force her to make a left-hand pass. That's going to be tough for her. Gets out to the corner. That's the same thing. That's our five man, unfortunately. But the idea is right, but the angle is wrong. And these two dribbles I hate are going to get them all the way out of trouble. And that's what kills us. Ball goes back to the top. That's pretty good pressure. And this, you can see this player doesn't want to dribble it. Looks to just to skip it. And we do a good job here. That defender is in deny. Takes this away. So their only option is over here. Now this is what you're going to have to work on. This angle of closeout. She's done here. She's cut on the high side. She's not forcing. She's going to give that right hand drive. 
we get lucky that they they attack the right hand and throw a really tough pass out of bounds. But that's the close that your athletes are going to have the most problem with is trying to play out of that. So that one kills us. She gets penetration. They throw it out when we get lucky with it. But those are the type of things that are going to break. And again, I'll just show that one more time from the top so you get a sense of kind of that in real time. But again, it's okay, but there's the little breakdowns and those are the details that hurt you on those types of possessions. So there's those dribbles up we hate, deny it there well, and then gets ripped there. That, that can't happen, and then they throw it out of bounds. Okay, so we're going to stop that. Okay, so I'm getting kind of towards the end here. I'm going to go back to my, my PowerPoint. Um, and I'm going to, I wanted to talk a lot about drills, but um, I think it's always tough to do it um, if that's going to be the case. So these are the drills that we would run now. I would say this. I'm kind of running out of time. I'll, I'll leave some time for questions, Chris. Yeah, the YouTube time. video that I put on has all these drills. And all these drills can be run for man defense or or uh, zone defense, or uh, sorry, man defense or force left defense. I will explain one of my my drills. One of my favorite drills in here is the perfect possession drill. I think it's always my the favorite at a clinic. Um, so essentially, what a perfect possession drill is, it's going to be half court man offense versus man defense, and you're going to set 51 seconds on the clock. Why we go with 51 seconds is it's the average possession is 17 seconds. It's three possessions in a row, and it's going to be the goal of the defense is to guard it perfectly, not give up any scores or make any mistakes in the full 51 seconds. If they can do it, they can guard 51 seconds and get out of the drill. But where you get to go into it is you get to be a coach, and depending on your mood, you can be picky with how you do it. So uh, what you're going to do is you're going to let them play it out, play out the possession. But if there's a breakdown, so let's say you're forcing left and you give up a right drive, or you're forcing sideline and give up middle, or you don't call a screen coverage, Little breakdowns like that, you're going to reset the clock every time. So you're going to let the possession play out, put the offense back on top, play 51 seconds from the top again. Offensive rebounds, reset the clock. Um, any little things you're talking about. We don't, we don't ice the screen properly. Whatever mood you're in, you're going to set that that way. But the goal is it's going to make the defense have to get those small things right. Offensive rebounds, automatically back to, back to 51 seconds. Scoring works like this. If if the offensive team scores a wide open shot and you're just not happy with that look, that's going to reset it. If they score it, if you play good defense, can test it, and they score it, you're going to leave the clock where it is. So it might be 36 seconds. You'll say, okay, that was a, that was a tough shot. Offense scored, put it back on top. We're going to play from now down from 36 seconds, and we're going to play it out. Defense can take five seconds off the clock by forcing a steal, so they can get to run some time off when you get that there. As I just – I think the most key is – let the possession play all the way out. So even if it takes the full 51 seconds and then reset it after, let them get, don't stop the possession as soon as the mistake is made. What I liked on this is I found a drill in watching some of these clinics is they do the same thing. Cause this is a bit of a meat grinder drill. It really, it can be really, if you're in a bad mood or it can be tough on, on the athletes. You can do it in 24 seconds. And I saw that at a clinic earlier, a couple of weeks ago where they just do it in a shorter amount of time. So it's one possession and essentially you have to play perfect for one possession. It's a really good drill, and it's one that I think you can tailor to whatever defensive system you run. So um, I'm going to leave that there. Again, I mean, uh, check out the, maybe check out that YouTube video. Feel free to contact me. I'm sorry I didn't get to the drills, but I think the questions are important. So any contact info, if you want more info on this, email's there, Twitter's there. Chris, I'm going to throw it over to you and try to get to some of these questions. Yeah, so we got, we got a bunch here. So, uh, Dave, that last uh, clip that you showed, a couple of questions. Uh, were you okay with the way your girls were denying the pass right, or would you like them to be a little more upline on that? And then the follow-up on that is if you're upline more, are you hoping to force a backdoor pass or just force the ball back the way it came from? Yeah, so good question. So we wanted I, in that clip, I wanted to be way more up. I think I wanted to be a little more aggressive, knowing, again, scout-wise is going to determine how aggressive you're going to be. I'm okay with the back door. We just want to get the ball away. I feel like if we get good ball pressure on the ball, that backdoor pass shouldn't be that easy to throw because you're going to be putting some pressure on that looking to that side of the court. So we're okay with that. Uh, we want to send it back. If they hit backdoor, we've got rotation. We're okay. We're not trying to give up backdoor, but we just don't want an easy reversal. As you saw in that one clip, when they get over the right side easy, it just deflates the whole defense. Okay, perfect. Um, a question here. Um, what percentage of um, – 
of the time were you in this defense? Were you playing it almost the whole time? A lot of these people don't know, Dave, that you're the king of junk defense. <laughs> um, but uh, what percentage when with the provincial team were you playing this? Is this like 90% of your defense? Or yeah, when, when we played man defense, this was our defense. I, at first, I thought we could go like 40%, 50%. We, anytime we went man, we went with this. Now, last year, we played a lot more zone. We, were, we had the right pieces for it. But anytime we went man, we went to this defense. So this was really became our, our defense. Okay, perfect. Um, next question is, would you advise using this with as low as grade seven and eight players? Or do you think that that would slow their development? I think part of that probably is, are you playing to develop or win? But um, yeah. could you use that with the youth team? Yeah, I think, it, like you said, that's part of the, the, what's your focus? What are you trying to develop? I think a youth team maybe, but I do feel like you need to be able to kind of get them to understand all concepts and closeouts. And I think really just trying to get them to understand spacing and angles on anything is good. Um, I think, I think it could work, but again, I think you need to be able to focus on development at that age group. I think where it's most effective would be, I, I would say high school and up, uh, because I think your athletes can do both because it's, it's a lot to understand angles, but anyone teaching angles and ball pressure at that youth level is not necessarily a bad thing as long as they see the bigger picture. Of it. Perfect. Um, have you tried these concepts in zone? Have you tried forcing left in zone? Have not, have not tried it. I think that's, that would be interesting to play around with it because uh, you could force it into help and force it into places. Um, but I have not tried that. I, I've seen some, seen some people do it, but I'm not that good a coach to do that. So, Okay. <laughs> I think you are. I think that's a lie. Um, with, uh, with the ball starting on the right-hand side at, let's say, 45 or in the slot spot up top, um, and you're naturally forcing left, this question came up right at the beginning. Um, how's your rotations? Are you opening the door and hoping to force them to the opposite corner? Um, what would your – you showed the rotations um, the other way, but can, can you flip the board and show us how your rotations would be quickly? So you're attacking on the right side? Yeah, like like if they ended up getting middle on you, uh, on the other side. Yeah, you so just... you're trying to what what you talked about. You're trying to send them. You're trying to send them out. You're trying to send them to the corner. You're trying to ride them out to the. Okay. You're not letting them get to the paint. So you want to send them. If you can ride them all the way to the corner, that's where you want to put them all the way down there. Perfect. You don't. You still uh, don't want them. You're gonna force middle, but you don't want to give up a middle lane. You want to force them out of any danger area, which is going to be the middle of the key. So that's a good question. Yep. Horn sets, how do you play against elbow or uh, high horn set? Yeah, so that, that was actually one clip that was a horn set that they played. We're going to – we always would drop off a little bit, so we're not going to hug the horns. Again, Chris is the king of horns, so I have played a lot against him. But you can't hug the horns. you got to drop off and be off them. And then on the entry of the ball, so when they go to – let's say they enter to one of the elbow – you're going to get your position to force left on that. And the other person on the elbow, they're going to drop to be more of like a drop coverage or sag where they're going to be in help. You can't stay attached to the high elbows because you're going to get killed on that. So on the, on the catch of the ball on the horns, you're going to move off. That. Yep. Um, off ball. We're going to keep going here for a little bit. I don't know who's hosting next, but we'll, uh, we'll give them some time here. Um, <laughs> Uh, off ball screens. Is there any particular way you're uh, doing off ball screens, defending those? No, uh, off ball. That's a good question. We're, I mean, there's sides you have some whole separate philosophy on that, but nothing to the force part of it. I would say we spent a lot of time at the university level talking about we can switch them if we need to, but I, I like sometimes I like mostly not switching them, but that's just going to be a whole philosophy, but nothing unique to force left. Okay. Uh, I think a really great question here from uh, the legend, Tim Brady. Um, how would you attack your own force left? Well, where thought. teams, yeah, that's a good question. Where teams got us uh, a lot the first year was they attacked us middle a lot and they attacked us out of the, the elbows a lot. And we had trouble with that because we're trying to give angles, but it's tougher to help off that. So they attacked us down the middle of the floor. We did a better job some of those adjustments that I showed, but that was the piece that I had to really work on there. Um, they also, I would say the teams that kind of could swing it quick and catch and rip quick before you can get that, you know, playing the second and third side of the floor, quick ball movement, and then just the rip and attack off that. You saw in that last clip where the defender got caught, played pretty good defense, forced four passes, but they eventually got caught. And that's just a tough, tough closeout, tough rotation. So Teams that move it quick or that punch us down the middle a lot, but you can adjust the both. 
Um, Mr. Tanner Brightman has a question on how do you defend twist ball screens if you're forcing left? So comes up your set, they twist it and flip, flip sides on it. Yeah, of course, Tanner's going to throw the, the hardest question at me. So it's, again, you can do a couple things off it. Um, I think, I mean, you can get complicated. You could just switch your coverage. You could just switch it. I think that's one of the things in this is that I just said, if things go where we get into some trouble, I would just switch it. But that's a good question, something that I would have to – we didn't see a lot of, but I would have to play, play around with that and figure out what I could do off that. But you could, like I said, you could just switch if you had trouble with it. Yep. Um, if you had a good driver that's a lefty, um, yeah. do you force them right or is that going to screw up all your rotations uh, for the rest of the team? So square them up. That's essentially what I talked about. So I'm going to get my toes to your toes. I'm going to stay in front of you and I'm going to slide my chest. If you want to go left, my chest is in front of you. If you want to go right, my chest is in front of you. I'm going to square you up a little bit more uh, and, and be a little bit more straight in front of you. I think that's the easiest way. Because if you start set, now, I know Carlton. And other places will have they go weak, which is different than force left. A weak defense means you're going to force off hand, so you're going to force three guys to the right hand and two left hand. That's that's a very complicated, very smart team. Again, I don't think in my context we could have done that, but we just want to square you up, and then depending on what type of player you are, that's where our distance, our ball pressure is going to be. Great. Um, can you use this with? Uh... Unfortunately, one of our, our members here, four of the five players are slower than average. Could you still run a, run a force last defense, even if you didn't necessarily have the speed? Oh, yeah, I, I think so. I, I really do because it's, it's more positioning. It's really more positioning than, than anything else. So as long as your angles are good and your, your help side rotations are there, you don't have to be quick. It, it helps, of course, but you can definitely play this on a slower team for sure. And I would right. say one more thing to add, Chris, I just is, yeah, keep going. I guess where you can change this is you can adjust your pressure. So you can be more aggressive than I showed. Like I said, you can pick up full court. You could trap off ball screens. You could make this very aggressive. You could also make this very safe. So again, you don't, if you're an aggressive team, play this, but you want to play it up tempo, play it aggressive. If you're slow, like that last question, then, then play more in the half court. I think you don't have to play it one style. And like I said, I gave you a bunch of ideas on it. My thing, like anything, offense, we always do a good job of we take things and we say we've got to make it tailored to our personnel. Kind of do that on defense too sometimes. You can find out what works for your team and then take this and say, well, you know, my team can ice or my team's not can't ice. What can we do off that? So, yeah, Last one. I keep getting them. <laughs> I think you're setting the record for questions here. We're upwards of 17. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good um, thing or a bad thing. but yeah, no, That's a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, <laughs> By uh, by practicing this uh, in the summer, especially short season, did you did you find it made it hard for you guys to work on your offense? Um, because not all teams are lock left or force left. Um, did you find yeah. that you struggled to teach offense while you're doing this? That's a good question because uh, in a year, uh, three years before that, we worked on a pack on defense all summer. And then when we got to games, everybody just denied the crap out of the reversal pass. So we were frozen in the moment. So what we had to do in that short session was it, it didn't, like I said, it actually made us better in offense because we started to take left-hand drive looks. It opened up the floor a lot more. So we were able to sort of attack middle a little bit more and attack in different spots. So it didn't hurt us. And then as you saw on that tape, I pulled in a lot in a short training period. I pulled in a lot of outside opponents to give us reps of sending us to the baseline and sideline and everything else. So we just found different people to scrimmage against to work on the offense but it didn't hurt us it actually like i said when we got to the tournament we could actually make plays with our left which is not something we were doing beforehand yeah i'm not gonna i get to ask a question now yeah uh, my turn my turn um we're not going to classify this to junk defense but what would you say your favorite junk defense is uh in a one-off situation where you need multiple stops down the stretch yeah i mean i think if you know again if you want to get really junky i think anything that I always love stuff that goes from a zone to a man. I think those are great because they're tough to read. You're deep into it. I think those are good. I like anything aggressive late in the clock. So if you know, let's say you're going to play man defense and then you're just going to trap under 10 or something. I like that stuff a lot too. Uh, I'm a bit, I am a, a, a guy who plays a lot of zone. So any traps in zones I like too. So you can cut. And I like anything that looks the same, but you can adjust the pressure. So 
Sometimes we're in straight two, three. Sometimes we're in a trapping two, three. I like stuff like that because it's tougher for point guards to understand what they're in. That's awesome. Okay. Well, great job on presenting the force uh, lock left in force. Um, that was great, Dave. I think all of our viewers took a lot away from it, a ton of questions and a lot of interest. So thanks for presenting. It's nice to see you on this side of the, of the screen this afternoon. And uh, I'll leave you with the last here comments, Dave, and we'll log it off. Yeah, I just want to thank uh, Golden Ticket Sports and Basketball Immersion, especially Chris and Tanner for including me into this and having me present. Uh, like I said, if you have any questions, and I'm sure you will, this is a lot of information in a short amount of time. Reach out and contact. 